Hello, everyone, and welcome to St. Peter's. I should say welcome home. I will first both apologize and let you know that uh, this is not a usual thing to put a, a shock and awe painting up. We usually try to find something that's nice and, and easy and light, but you know what? This one, um, this one is moving. This is called The Temptation of, of St. Anthony, and uh, you might think it's painted by Dolly. It is not. This is actually from the 16th century. This is a Dutch painter. Uh, this was a favorite subject of the sort of late medieval, early um, Renaissance. You can't really call anything painted in Holland a Renaissance, but you get the idea of that, of that window. Um, and so you get this really intense surrealistic image. And it's a great way to kick off our discussion of Anthony. Uh, Anthony of the Desert, Anthony of Theba, um, several other appellations, Anthony the Great. Uh, he was biographied by Athanasius of the famous Athanasius Creed and truly a remarkable figure. He is often called the father of monasticism. Not that there weren't ascetics and anchorites in those early days of the Christian church who would go off and live in solitary or in small communities, but he was kind of the first who set the model. He went off into the desert um, after he read the Matthean passage about he should give away all his goods and go and serve the poor. He was a prom he came from a prominent family in Egypt and was uh, was orphaned at a very young age, received his inheritance as the firstborn male. Um, he gave away that inheritance, that wealth, placed his sister in a community of committed virgins, which may not sound like uh, an advantage, but actually it kind of was in those days to be preserved from the possession of marriage, gave her some freedom to live a full life um, without the obligations and burdens of the patriarchy. That said, Anthony went off and lived in the desert in seclusion. But of course, people would come and visit him because who wants anything more in seclusion than to have visitors? But he uh, chose to live in an abandoned Roman fort uh, for 25 years, as well as in caves, uh, and would have water and bread and simple vegetables delivered to him. He kept a very spare diet, he lived in a very ascetic life. And uh, as Athanasius depicts, and as you see in this picture, the devil seemed to take a peculiar interest in him, and he faced many, many, many temptations. The stories are literally woven throughout both his hagiography as well as in the legends told about Anthony of Egypt. Um, he eventually started to gather a community around him as people would come out to the desert and decide to stay and started to build a sort of proto rule of life that people would follow but uh, truly he's remembered for his asceticism his setting aside of earthly pleasures as well as the embrace of the privations that place you into a quiet place with god uh laura you got anything you want to throw in on top of that or are you still reeling from the trauma of the picture yeah pretty pretty much pretty much <laughs> all right Please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, give us the thumbs up. And uh, if you're watching on Facebook, give us a follow. We're glad to have you with us and honored to share morning prayer with you as we move on into the day. Here we go. It's time for morning prayer. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. 
Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 38 will read responsibly by full verse. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. For your arrows have sunk into me and your hand has come down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head. They weigh like a burden too heavy for me. My wounds grow foul and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. All day long I go around mourning. My loins are filled with burning and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am utterly spent and crushed. I groan because of the tumult of my heart. O oh Lord, all my longing is known to you. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My friends and companions stand aloof from my affliction and my neighbors stand far off. Those who seek my life lay their snares. Those who seek to hurt me speak of ruin and meditate treachery all day long. But I am like the deaf I do not hear, like the mute who cannot speak. Truly, I am like one who does not hear and in whose mouth is no retort. But it is for you, O Lord, that I wait. It is you, O Lord, my God, who will answer. For I pray, only do not let them rejoice over me, those who boast against me when my foot slips. For I am ready to fall, and my pain is ever with me. I confess my iniquity. I am sorry for my sin. Those who are my foes without cause are mighty, and many are those who hate me wrongfully. Those who render me evil for good are my adversaries because I follow after good. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, do not be far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Jeff, Jepheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These were the three sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was peopled. Noah, a man of the soil, was the first to plant a vineyard. He drank some of the wine and became drunk, and he lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Jephah took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and walked backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, lowest of slaves shall, be, shall he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed by the Lord my God be Shem, and let Canaan be his slave. May God make space for Jephthah, let him live in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his slave. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. All the days of Noah were 950 years and he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle is the third song of Isaiah together. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, 
deep gloom enshrouds the peoples, but over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, by day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Therefore, let us go on toward perfection, leaving behind the basic teaching about Christ and not laying again the foundation, repentance from dead works and faith towards God, instruction about baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgments. And we will do this if God permits. For it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away, since on their own they are crucifying again the Son of God and are holding him up to contempt ground that drinks up the rain falling on it repeatedly and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is cultivated receives a blessing from God. But if it produces thorns and thistles, it is worthless and on the verge of being cursed. Its end is to be burned over. Even though we speak in this way, beloved, we are confident of better things in your case, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust. She will not overlook your work and the love that you showed for her sake in serving the saints as you still do. And we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end, so that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, the Te Deum, together. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, as you by your Holy Spirit enabled your servant Antony to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, so give us grace to follow you with pure hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of your name, above you for the honor of your name. Amen. Please join me for a prayer to the whole human family. O oh God, you have made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I welcome your intercessions and thanksgivings. Prayers this morning, especially for those who are struggling with their addictions, whether it be alcohol or drugs or gambling. <clears throat> Lord, we ask that you strengthen their resolve and that you surround them with people to encourage them and lift them up as they struggle to move into recovery and away from the dangers of addiction. Amen. Pray for all those who are struggling with the weather today particularly for the homeless and those who are tasked with working outside in these freezing temperatures. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Bunbury, the Anglican Church of Australia. And in the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reverends J. Michael McHugh and Jennifer Ovenstone-Smith. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for morning prayer. Hey, Timmy. We appreciate your time with us today, and we give, bid you a blessing. Stay warm, stay safe, and do join us for uh, Noonday Eucharist. We'll remember Anthony again, not with that same startling picture, I promise. And uh, we'll see you there. As well, we will be together for evening prayer tonight, and we'll keep you posted on upcoming events and things that we're doing online. 
as I said, please like and subscribe. Keep up that. Yes. Bible study at 10. Bible study at 10. Sorry. And Alice's cup is open and we've got the community supper and we got a pastoral appointment tonight. So it's a busy day. Oh, and ECS advisory board. So light Wednesday. Please do like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us that thumbs up. Give us a follow if you're watching on Facebook. And of course, we're honored to have you with us. Welcome home to St. Peter's. Take care and God bless. Bye.